Hi, where are you from? In suburban Chicago. What's your name? Be ever impressive. But never duplicate. Hey everybody, what's going on? I'm Eric C. You're watching The Iron Noise. Hope you guys are doing good. I'm doing just great. Today I'm working on the Kramer body. I have some small scratch and chip filling that I need to do before I end up wet sanding and buffing this out. Now I've already done the wet sanding on the back. I did, this is all done with 2500 grit sandpaper. There was a couple of spots, like right here is a spot. There was a spot over here. That's just a little, uh, I could probably fill that up with. I got a couple spots over here I got to finish. This I could probably fill with the clear. But anyways, so I just gave it a little bit of a rough sanding, wet sanding. And I wanted to see what this uh, new touch-up stuff that I ended up picking up. Now, this is a Suzuki Candy Apple Red. So it's going to go with a, you know, probably any type of a Suzuki model that carries this candy red. Oh, it's a little bit on the darker side, but as it dries, it seems to kind of like even out a little bit. And then when you move it with the you know angle of the light and stuff, it changes a little bit just like this will. So right now I have a few spots I gotta touch up that are on the front of the guitar. It's like right here, that is a spot that needs to be, I need to put a little clear in there. It's a little bit of a dimple. I have to put a little bit more clear on that. some clear on it. There's a little scratch here but that will come out when I go and hit it with the clear when I sand the clear coat. So I got a couple spots over here. And this has got a pen and a brush so I'm using the pen part of it. And I'm just kind of still dropping it little dabs on top of it the spot that needs the where the chip is. Now the idea of this stuff is it does shrink so when it dries, it'll shrink and then I'll be able to kind of put the clear on top of that. Let's see here. Some of these marks will come out when I do the sanding, but some of the scratches. Careful because I don't want too much paint on this tip. does not take a lot at all. And what I've also done is this comes with a bottle of clear as well. So after this dries, I'll kind of hit it with the sandpaper a little bit. And I'll dab a little bit of clear on top of it. And the clear also is going to shrink. Now on the back of this, uh, same thing that I did on the front of this here, all of the holes for the controls, all the holes that are, are pre-drilled for the pickups, the back covers and stuff, I took the clear and went around, stuck them inside each hole, went around and kind of added some clear in there. So when I do the wet sanding on this, I shouldn't have any problems with the wood swelling up because the wood should be sealed in all the, the areas where it's, it's exposed. So I received a message from another eBay buyer about the Eddie Van Halen 51 49 and a half Epiphone Les Paul. So I ended up picking up this and I didn't pay 180 bucks for it, so you can see that it, the price is crossed out. It's red throughout, and I should be able to do the black and white striping on this with uh, no problems. All right, so I gave this thing some time to cure, and it, this stuff dries pretty quickly. And I already hit it with a little bit of clear after wet sanding it a little bit. So now I'm going to wet sand the whole top of this guitar and finally get it buffed out afterwards and you know, start assembling things, getting things ready. Now I'm still, I end up redoing the headstock because I did not like it. The bad thing about uh, the decals that I got under is you can only use them once and only once. You can't you reuse them after you apply them so I had to sand down the whole headstock back to wood again and then respray it with the black and that'll give me a nice flat surface. The bad thing about using decals with an adhesive on it is the adhesive will swell up paint and that's exactly what it did and that's exactly why I had to sand it all the way down to wood again. Uh, not a big deal. I mean it actually want to make it look nice make it look um, perfect as far as uh, 
the way it's supposed to look and not have anything funky going on with it at all. So I'm going ahead and sanding this down. I can already see I might have to do a little fill in one spot over here with the clear coat. It seems like it shrunk the clear shrunk down a little bit. But this will show me after doing the wet sanding where high spots are, low spots are, and where I have to sand again. So right now I am sanding this, and you can see that it's a little bit of a milky color. And that's what I want, because that I know I'm only sanding clear. So yeah, that's going to need a little bit more. Yeah, that's going to need a little bit more clear on top of that. Not a big deal. So I painted this inside area over here instead of having to try to do it with the red because I didn't know when I was going to get the red or if I was even going to be able to get it. Uh, it showed no tracking. When it was shipped, it showed, didn't even know where it was coming from, when it was going to be here or anything. So I kind of like just, you know, said, well, forget it. I can't find it at the auto parts store, so I'm not going to get it at all. But all of a sudden it showed up the other day. I was like, oh, okay, cool. So I get a test spot because it's supposed to be lacquer. And when I did the test spot, I did it inside a cavity over here because lacquer is not good when it comes to, uh, you know, you could put anything on top of lacquer, but you can't put lacquer on top of anything and you just want to make sure that I wasn't going to have a problem where it was going to act like a paint remover and cause me to have an issue with the paint on here you know, acting as a, like a paint remover and then all of a sudden now I got to respray this whole top or whole body or well it'll be the whole body because trying to match candy apple red is not very easy So I'm giving this thing a good sanding and then I want to check things out afterwards to see if I could see anything as far as imperfections in the finish and see if I need to address them before buffing. 